Hey guys, me again. So, <coughs> excuse me, on the um, 17th of uh, January uh, this year, Charles Flanagan is going to be holding some sort of a commemoration thing in Dublin Castle for um, the RIC and DMP. Uh, officers that were shot during the War of Independence. Now, for those of you that don't know, the RIC uh, are basically the Black and Tans. Now, this also includes the auxiliaries who are usually uh, painted with the same brush, so to speak, as the Black and Tans, but the Black and Tans would have just been normal soldiery. Uh, that worked as police and the auxiliaries would have been uh, kind of counter-terrorism, anti-terrorism type, thing, um, type group uh, that would have comprised of low-ranking uh, officers that would have come back from World War I. Uh, so just to um, go into a small bit of it, um, the Royal Irish Constabulary um, went close uh, approximately from 1816 to 1922. Uh, they were woefully unprepared for the War of Independence in 1919 uh, after two officers were shot dead in Solahed Bjog in Tipperary which basically started the war um, that would have been Dan Breen's crew um, at this point Michael Collins was systematically attacking British government forces uh, the, while the British army um, controlled most of the cities it was the RIC that bore the brunt of uh, provincial attacks such as villages and small towns uh, yes villages and towns outside um, cities the RIC were specifically targeted because they were an intelligence agency kind of like what the Gestapo would have been in um, World War II uh, by 1920 UK sources say that 117 RIC members were killed, 185 were wounded, and 600 had resigned from the force of 9,500. Now, bear in mind, the officers themselves would have been Protestant, whereas normal rank and file would have been, I think it was made up of about 70% uh, Roman Catholic, whereas the officers would have been Protestant. Um, so, World War I, uh, vets that returned were offered double the pay, including board in Ireland uh, in 1920. These were basically what would be the Black and Tans coming over and the auxiliaries. Uh, I think the pay was went from 30... 35 shillings a week to 70 shillings a week, I believe. I'm not sure what that is in today's money, but it can't have been bad. Um, so they came over and they were a reserve uh, police force, basically there just to back up the RIC. So like I said, although they were completely different, uh, the auxiliaries, they were all painted with the one brush. Um, the auxiliaries were uh, the higher end of things, the anti-terrorism units. So in the summer of 1920, uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the Black and Tans went on a bit of a purge, so to speak. Um, this was in retaliation for... Uh, the IRA which would have killed their officers they would basically kind of go back and do something else so in 1920 um, the Black and Tans sacked and burnt many small 
towns and villages, including Toom in County Galway, Trim, Balbriggan, Nakrahi, Nock, Crahari, Turles, and Temple Moor. Uh, well, it should be interesting to see how um, I get to actually, I'll come back to that. So, Tralee was completely shut down because of its sympathy towards the IRA. Uh, there was no food or water let in to the, the city for about three days. And I believe there was three to four civilians shot. Um, but these attacks all culminated on uh, the 29th of December that year by the Black and Tans and the Auxiliary Forces. Just <coughs> excuse me again. It'll take me eventually. Um, destroying most of Cork City. Uh, Cork City Centre, excuse me. Um, also, the shooting of 13 civilians in Croke Park, which was our bloody Sunday, um, was a joint affair between the RIC and the Auxiliary Forces after a British hit squad was taken out by Michael Collins and the IRA. So it turns out in 2000, uh, with documents that were released by the British government, this shooting was in no way sanctioned at all by any high-ranking or even high-local-ranking uh, RIC hierarchy. So basically it was, they went in and just shot the place up. Uh, they were in order to do it, they just did it. Um, towards the end of... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me again, guys. I'm just so far I'm recovering from a chest infection. Uh, towards the end of 1922, even the King of England was questioning um, the the actions of the the Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries. Uh, supposedly, over seven thousand Black and Tans served in Ireland between 1920 and 22, and a total of 404 and four. Or I see members died now recently. Um, some guy, uh, who's work who's working with um, uh, some historical police and thing has said the ten thousand nine hundred and thirty six black and tans served in Ireland, uh, between nineteen twenty and nineteen twenty two. And 2,264 auxiliaries. There were 152 black and tans killed. And there was 44 auxiliaries killed. Uh, out of all these black and tans, it served 833. Or sorry, 883 were Irish. And out of the auxiliaries, there was 126 Irish. Uh, so yeah. Uh, <sighs> In 2011, Leo Varadkar called these people murderers and of the highest order. And in 2020, he is commemorating them. Um, Charles Flanagan is uh, our Minister for Justice at the moment. And he is questionable in standing as regards when it comes to anything Republican. He has lodged a complaint again twice against Sinn Féin for wearing the lily. He has ridiculed uh, them personally in the doll at one point with Michael Noonan asking if the lilies were gummed or glued but yet these people have no problem wearing the poppy but God forbid they should show any respect to the people that gave their lives for me this state so yeah it goes without question that no I mean even Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael supporters a lot of them can't uh, put up with this I know Fianna Gael were pro-treaty back in the day but to make a holy show of the leader of the um the signature, the, the the people who signed 
the proclamation by putting a wall of British soldiers, British soldiers' names in the same place as they're buried and expecting to commemorate them with their names over their graves. Uh, British soldiers that could have killed anyone on that list, including, uh, God forbid, anyone from the GPO. Um, it's sad that we're doing this, uh, that Fine, Fine Gael as a government are let do this by the Irish people. And coming up to 2020, I would hope they, um, uh, Fine Gael as a party, are decimated. Not just because of this, but because of other issues as regards to health service and all. But this, this really just, just digs a hole for Fine Gael. And I am glad to say, as long as I've been voting, I've never voted for them. I will never vote for anyone from Fianna Fáil. I will never vote anyone from Fianna Gael. And I will now never vote anyone from Labour either way. Um, but as regards councillors and the like here in Nina, we have a Fine Gael councillor from Temple Moor. Now, this Fine Gael councillor, when he was a TD, had uh, compared Irish water protesters to ISIS members. Uh, his name uh, doesn't matter what his name is because I'd probably only get done for naming him. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he believes. In fact, you know what? I will name him. It's Noel Coonan. Uh, Noel Coonan said as regards uh, Irish water protesters in the Dáil that they were akin to ISIS. Um, I'm unsure how. But now it'll be interesting to see how he stands by his party when the town he lived in, the town he represents, that was sacked by the Black and Tans. What's his stance on that? It'll be interesting to see because when he had an office here in town, he had a Michael Collins statue in the window. But it'll be interesting to see now if he stands by his party as they commemorate the people who Michael Collins fought against. But them's are the breaks. Uh... It's going to be interesting times ahead, uh, but what I would say when you exercise your vote in uh, this year, in the general election, when, it, when it's called, please do so, remembering that Fine Gael have already commemorated the people who executed uh, the signatories on the proclamation and they are now commemorating murderous psychopaths that just destroyed most of this country over a two-year period i guess that's all you have to remember this is me over and out guys thank you